This episode of Ken's Comments is part of a series on the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. We call it the Lord's Prayer. Jesus' words were meant to be a model to all of us on how we should pray. The words are, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Bible is filled with different names or titles for God. For example, He is Lord, Master, Savior, Redeemer, King, to list just a few. When Jesus taught his followers how to pray, he could have used any of these terms. Instead, Jesus chose purposely to use the familial term, Father. Now reflect on that just for a moment. God is not a celestial being who is distant and unapproachable. Rather, he is a God of intimacy. The one to whom we pray is a father to us, and consequently we are his sons and daughters. How does one become a son or daughter? Well, the answer, of course, is by birth. And so to address God as father means that a birthing process has taken place. This idea is reinforced by the words Jesus spoke to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you're doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Nicodemus initially misunderstood Jesus to mean a second physical birth until Jesus clarified for him that there is a distinction between a physical birth and a spiritual rebirth. Those of us who have entrusted our lives to Jesus, the Son of God, the one who took our sins upon himself, we are born again. We have become children of God, spiritual heirs of all that is God's, because He is our Father. I realize that the term Father may evoke painful memories for some because of hurtful relationships with their biological fathers. This is particularly true for those persons whose fathers abused or abandoned them. In the Lord's Prayer, the term Father is to be understood in its idealized sense, referring to the one who cares and provides for every need of his children and loves us unconditionally. And only God can be a perfect Father. It is also interesting to note that Jesus uses the plural pronoun, our Father, not the singular, my Father. The significance of the intentional use of the plural is a reminder that God is the Father of all of us, that we are all part of a larger family or community. In fact, we will see as we continue this series that the model prayer says, Give us this day our daily bread. I am to pray not simply for my needs to be met, but for the needs of others to be met as well. You know, it's an important reminder that we are a part of a family of God, and we are to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. So as we continue to reflect on the model of prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, I wonder if it gives us some comfort to know that whenever we find ourselves in the midst of troubles and fears, we have the privilege to call upon our Father. That's something to consider. <music>